Hi, I'd like to welcome Allison Klein, who is a lead federal policy reporter for Education Week, and she has been following the Every Student Succeeds Act since its conception. Uh, I'd like to ask you, Allison, just in terms of a, in terms of an overview, you were listening to very general comments from folks here today, and um, what is your sense of, uh, in big picture, your sense of just how prepared schools and districts are for the implementation, full implementation of the laws that makes its debut this fall? So I think that's a great question. Um, the education department really hasn't put out a ton of guidance, so there are um, a lot of questions um, from states and districts. But in terms of some of the bigger changes um, from the law, those aren't really gonna hit for a few years because it's gonna take a little while um, before low-performing schools will be identified and before states and districts will have to start putting in um, these evidence-based interventions. Um, Right now, I think the biggest changes are going to be on the accountability front. Um, as you know, Mark, because you edit all our coverage, um, Secretary DeVos has um, approved 37 state plans plus uh, D.C. and Puerto Rico. So the accountability is sort of set. Um, but in terms of which schools are going to get identified under that accountability, under those new accountability systems, you know, that's still, um, still something we'll have to wait and see in most states. A few states are ahead of the curve on that. There were quite a few questions over the course of the day in a variety of different, uh, different booths on the question of school improvement and uh, low-performing low schools, what can be done to turn them around. Um, what were you hearing from, from the folks that were, were asking questions where, uh, where some of the work needs to be done at this point? So I saw a really big range of questions. Um, some folks were asking really general questions, like what does ESSA say about low-performing schools, which if you, happen, if you didn't happen to see the answer to that question, um, ESSA has two categories for low-performing schools. One is schools in um, comprehensive support and improvement, which is basically schools that are in the bottom 5% um, of performers in the state, uh, plus those with where fewer than um, two-thirds of students graduate, so schools with really high, high dropout rates. Um, and then there's this other category of um, targeted improvement, which is schools where particular vulnerable groups of students like English language learners and students in special education are struggling. So some people just needed to know those basic facts, like how does ESSA identify categories? How does it handle school improvement? And then there were some really in the weeds questions about things like how does how is the department going to monitor the different tiers of evidence? Um, ESSA requires states to put in evidence-based interventions um, with all of its, uh, with schools that are um, either in targeted or comprehensive support. Um, and it's unclear at this point how, um, how they'll be monitoring, you know, how much evidence is behind a particular intervention. And one person had a very specific question about one of the tiers. And the answer to that question was, hey, the department just hasn't said yet how they're going to be monitoring this. Well, so that raises a very interesting question. Uh, you know, you have a quite a range of, of knowledge and understanding about the law out there in the in the countryside. Uh, what can we expect from the education department as to whether it's going to be providing some really nuts and bolts guidance and information and direction for implementation of this law? So there's been a really big shift, right? Um, under the Obama administration, when ESSA first passed, um, Secretary at the time, John King and his crew put out um, a number of uh, guidance documents on things like evidence-based interventions, um, implementation of Title IV, which is another area we got a lot of questions on. Um, they put out some guidance documents on English language learners and foster kids, um, regulations on testing. Um, Secretary DeVos and her team have not really put out a ton of guidance on ESSA, what they have put out has been very general kind of FAQs. Um, that's sort of by design. They they have a different philosophy. They're um, they're really all about uh, local control and state control. So I think in general, the department seems to be taking a really hands off approach um, to to monitoring. Uh, ESSA implementation, which means a lot of these nitty gritty decisions will be made at the state and district level. So for our Ed Week audience then, what does, um, what does this mean in terms of milestones going forward? What should we be watching for for uh, kind of the next, the next things on the horizon for, for ESSA, the next kind of deadlines? So I'm waiting to see when all 50 plans get approved. Mm. Um, at least one state, Colorado, has been waiting almost a year for its approval. So uh, I'll, we'll wait and see when those, um, I guess, 13 other states get their approval. Um, and then the really interesting thing will be when states come out with these lists of which schools are in um, comprehensive improvement. That's sort of the next milestone. 
Um, and then we'll see them come out with lists of schools for targeted improvement. And we'll see what kind of interventions um, they're putting in place for those schools. That'll effectively tell us exactly where the, uh, the rubber meets the road on accountability. Yeah. Right. Those that mm -hmm. will identify the okay. schools for sure. Well, thank you very much, Allison. And for those looking for more information and resources, please uh, check out educationweek.org. Take a look at the Politics K-12 blog. Uh, you can also go back into your booth where you were asking questions today, scan to the bottom, and take a look at the uh, resources that are still available. We want to thank everybody who participated in today's online ESSA Summit, and we look forward to your feedback. Thanks for joining us.